Wow, Paradigm Shifters. It is the end of November, November 29th, 2022. Let's take a deep breath into that. This beautiful day that we've been given to breathe, to live, to transform. And I was preparing this morning, we have a very special guest, Transformation Tuesday, for our final week in Courage to Change the Things I Can. But before, when I was thinking about that word and why we even call this Transformation Tuesday, I was out walking and looking at the leaves transforming, at least here in Central Texas, and how everything is transforming all the time. And what does transformation mean? Transformation mean, and the definition that my, one of my mentors um, says, transform to move beyond a form, what we're moving beyond one form to another. And in Transformation Tuesday, we move beyond possibly a fixed mindset where we're stuck to a transform to a growth mindset. And there's that gap in between. So. Paradigm Shifters, we are a growing global community dedicated to shift, transform, and uplift the planet. Yeah. And we've been doing this since 2020, August 2020. And boy, the world has shifted. And so this is why I was wanted to have this special guest on. And this... Um, Today our, was our final week on courage to change the things I can. So how many of you over the last three or four years have praised the nurses for saving so many people? Remember when they were getting all the applause and everything? Remember that? And then I thought, where's the nurses now? What, what happened to them? Where's their transformation? You know, these are the caregivers we depended on. We still do. So I wanted to invite Denise Wooks in here. And let me tell you a little bit about her. She, Denise, has worked as a registered nurse for 40, for 40 years, helping people regain their health. Listen to this. I love how you said this. Regain their health and return them to their independent lifestyle. What a gift you are. And Denise is also a transformational coach, dream builders by design. How interesting is that? How would you like to have a nurse that would encourage you to dream? Yes, her passion and purpose is to mentor people on how to transform their health and improve their relationships, especially the relationships that they have with themselves. Yes, I love it, love it, love it. And that you've successfully transformed your own life and have gone from feeling lonely and lost and stuck and scared to now feeling courageous, confident, dedicated to love and her life now has direction. So. I would love to turn this over to you, Denise. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your story. And I've got some other burning questions in my mind, but go ahead and come on in. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much, Judy. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Judy, for this invitation. Um, I feel so honored uh, that you asked me to uh, join you today in this beautiful uh, Paradigm Shifters. And um, a little bit about me is, um, you know, uh, I went into nursing, I uh, love, help loving, love helping people, and also I love science. So, um, you know, uh, it was, you know, came easier to me than, let's say, math skills. Um, and um, I was grateful that, you know, I went through nursing and I realized that hospital, I did it for a few years but it really was not uh, something that uh, worked for me. So I, I went into the business sector and um, now I've been a nurse case manager with workers comp for about 25 years. And um, I found my niche and I was so grateful that nursing had a lot more <clears throat> avenues and different uh, parts than just working in the, and, and I admire, you know, the nurses and everybody, the doctors that work in the hospital 
And I knew at the same time, it was just not, you know, you don't go to school and they don't give you all these tests. Like, what are you going to be when you grow up? Right. You have, you think of what it's going to be and then it's something else. So, um, but I never left nursing and I've helped so many people from injuries in their work and um, get them back to work and coordinate their care and find different doctors and really be like the negotiator with the employer and the doctor and um, the insurance company and just pull it all together. And um, I realized that that's a strength of mine. I love people. I love to talk to the doctors and the patients. And I have the opportunity, which you don't get in the hospital. Sometimes I'll have them for six months or a year, depending on the injury. And I actually get to see them get well. And I tell them that the favorite day of mine, even though I miss them because I build a relationship, is when they're walking away, going back to their job or their lifestyle. They're able to walk because, you know, they, they, they no longer need a, a walker or they don't have a broken leg or whatever it is. And they say goodbye. And even though I'm sad because I miss them, it's just I've watched them get better and transform. And sometimes in a hospital or certain settings, you only get to see them at the worst and the sickest. And you never really get to see unless they come back, which is rare to really see how they've done after the hospital. So uh, I'm so blessed for that. And a few years ago, I uh, became a certified coach um, with the Brave Thinking Institute. And it was a blessing because, right, I did it in 2020, signed up and went to Mary Morrissey and the Brave Thinking, uh, the Dream Builder in, uh, in um, text, um, Los Angeles, and didn't know that the world was going to be shutting down uh, in a couple months. And it saved me because normally I work in the field and, you know, my company was uh, afraid that we would get sick. So they pulled us all in. So um, I live with me, myself and I. So between me and, you know, being home all the time and the uh, training and the brave thinking, we're able to do um, trainings online and Zoom. And I'm so grateful because I met such beautiful people and it kept this going um, because sometimes when you're alone and you're isolated and all this fear about, you know, people getting sick and dying um, can really, um, I guess, put you more in fear. So uh, I was really staying grounded and, and, you know, learning and then starting to do workshops. So I believe in my heart um, you know, signing up and I was led to uh, Mary Marcy, a part of me just, I didn't know what Dream Build Alive was, but, you know, it was around a special birthday and I said, why not? And there was some, an uptick of energy and said to go. And I was so grateful that I did because Mary and this whole, um, you know, training and everything gave me a new uh, look at life and able to, it gave me hope again that it can happen to me as well. Um, so I'm just so grateful. And um, if I look back, I don't even know who that woman is, um, you know, in 2020. And uh, I'm so grateful. So what was one of the toughest times maybe that you've had where you've, you've pulled it together and used a certain tool? And, and, you know, what is it in your life where there's a specific moment where you were at your lowest? that you could tell us about and how you pulled out of there? Sure. So um, I was married uh, for uh, 23 years and um, I have two adult sons and it was a uh, very toxic and um, abusive marriage. And the day that I went to, there was actually a shift. Um, you know, and that's what they say, right? It's a shift that all of a sudden you just have an awakening. And I had a shift while he was screaming at me that God said to me, stay still, do not say a word, do not, you know, try to push him or whatever, just let him calm down and go to the police. And it was the first time that I actually got that courage, but it was a shift in God that said, I, I, you know, I can't put, I can't do this anymore. Um, I don't deserve this. And I realized that it wasn't going to get any better. So uh, he was removed and we got divorced and um, there were struggles along the way, but to have that courage to literally leave the house, well, ha ask, ask him to leave 
Um, and, um, you know, and there was a lot of turmoil with the family, but to know what I, what, the, you know, sometimes we do things as a mom, we do things more for others than ourselves. And I knew my sons had already seen things that I wish they didn't. I wish I could erase it, but I wanted them to know that how my husband was treating me was not okay. And that I really hoped that they would learn that even though somebody is, you know, in a, a, a difficult or abusive uh, relationship, that someday the person will leave, that they'll get the courage. And um, so that was, you know, one of my main reasons, but I'm so grateful that God and my intuition, you know, was so there for me and everything, you know, the outpouring and the support and, uh, you know, was just amazing uh, when I made that shift. Yeah, there it is. That's courage. So what does courage mean to you? Like, where does that come from? Um, courage means to me that I tap into that inner voice. Uh, there's still fear. You know, the fear is the program, you know, the programs that have been running for a long time. Don't do this and don't do that and be a good little girl and blah, blah, blah. Don't make waves and all those things. And the courage um, is my soul speaking to me and being more authentic and listening to the values. You know, I, I never, um, you know, I never agreed with, with, you know, um, just, you know, mother and father, like, you know, not talking nice to one another and not being loving and kind. And I had this one view of what marriage in a relationship would be and how it turned out. And I, you know, I certainly know that I played a part, um, in, in, you know, certain things that I was expecting and he was expecting, but to me, courage is making a stand and setting a boundary even if you're petrified, that you are speaking your truth and you're going to walk away from a situation, even if it means you're losing uh, so many other things, you're not losing your dignity or you're gaining it back. Awesome. You said that word boundary. And so I, one of my experiences with boundary is setting it. And then a part of me going, come on, I dare you to come and do it. And I remember having the courage to set a boundary and a part of me wanted to be challenged and they didn't challenge. Like, now what do I do? I'm going to have to uphold this boundary. And so <laughs> tell me about, uh, the, uh, you know, setting that boundary, but after the after effects of that and how you set it now the courage to keep it. Yes. So uh, there was a big pull um, you know, to, uh, you know, have him come back. And um, I realized that, and I knew, like, as soon as I woke up the next day, now, of course, it was, I'm shaking in the police station, um, you know, like I was there three hours by myself, and they had to remove him. And, you know, I think it was like 1130, 12 o'clock by the time I got home after they removed him. And, um, I, you know, so I was exhausted, I woke up in the morning, you know, fear and oh, my God, what did I do? And just all of that. But then knowing I did, you know, the right thing for me. And um, and then I had a thought about, uh oh, you know, we have a joint account and mortgage was coming up. And I knew I don't know why, but another intuition said you better go to the bank because if you know him, he'll probably pull a lot of the money out. I hate to even think that. And, you know, which will be another way that I'll have to take him back because I didn't have the money to pay the mortgage. So I go to the bank and. I met this woman and he's in the other, you know, we had little cubicles, like uh, little doors and little rooms and at my Arbor bank and he's in one room and I'm in the other and he came out and he looked at me and then they said, Mr. Fuchs, you know, go back in your room. Thank God he listened. And then I told the woman what had happened. Now, what are the chances that I meet the lady in the bank that left an abusive marriage five years before and took herself and her baby out of the house, snuck out at, you know, at night, in the middle of the night. And she gave me all of the money, which actually is pretty unheard of. Like there was $5,000 in that account. And usually if it's a joint, they won't do that. But I realized that, um, you know, that I needed to do that and pay off the bills and, you know, not be swayed, you know, to take him back because of bills or out of fear. 
Amen. To cruise to change the things I can. And it's isn't it interesting how the two souls meet right at the exact same time that you are in need to move forward and everyone move forward. So good deal, good deal. There you go. So you talked about like the, the caregiver, you know, taking care of everybody and now you're taking care of yourself. How does that transition or transformation occur? Like, where do you have the courage to actually take care of yourself in that beginning moment? So being a caregiver and, you know, we all care, you know. (laughs) Right, right, right. So, you know, I think nursing teachers, you know, uh, doctors, you know, anything that's in physical therapists, anybody that's, you know, in, you know, helping people, um, you know, love people and to an extent are caregivers. And I believe that it probably started as a child. Um, you know, uh, there was addiction in the household. My father was a very high functioning alcoholic and my mother was uh, a very high functioning. She was uh, food, food was her addiction and she was raised in an alcoholic home. So anyway, so, um, you know, to not have mom lose her temper, you know, she, she had a very short temper and a lot of things bothered her. I believe that you kind of, you know, wanted to make mom happy. So, uh, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you want to get straight A's, right? You're a high achiever and you want to, you know, do for her because you don't want to have her yell. It didn't always work (laughs) because she still got upset and I was a kid, you know, obviously, but um, I really started from that. And then, you know, realized I was good at problem solving, right? Um, Because when you're in that, you know, situation, you're always trying to, I guess, uh, figure out what's the solution. So, um, but the caregiving just became natural. And, um, but the, uh, I guess the negative or the part that didn't work for me was that my mother used to say all the time, you have to be, you never could hurt anybody's feelings. So that meant to me that I'll do for you, but then I'll sacrifice me. And then what happens when you do that, the resentment pops up. So um, I've learned over many years that it's not about, um, you know, not taking care of others, but you have to be on the list. And if it doesn't feel good for you, or, you know, we call it, there's no private good. So if a situation, whether it's going out, um, you know, with somebody or just, you know, just uh, being invited to something or staying at a job or whatever, if it's not really aligned with your morals and really what's good for you, then it's not good for anybody else either. And I'm still uncovering that because at times I, you know, still have slips, but uh, the caregiving and I love taking care of people. And, but, you know, then it turns into that a self-worth that you need to take, you need to rescue people all the time to feel good about yourself. So now I'm learning uh, about self-care and that um, it is good to take care of others, but it's also good to, you know, exercise and eat, you know, eat healthy and sleep good, get good sleep and, um, you know, just do things for me and be able to express what my needs are, even if others are not happy with it. But if it's in my heart and I express what's important to me, it doesn't matter, you know, setting boundaries is not about other people's feelings. It's that I need this boundary to feel safe and respected. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) Amen, amen. Well, so I really love it. The the next question I I wanna ask you is, like in the beginning, you said that, you know, you love the character and you love the science. And, and that's, that's fascinating to me too. And um, that there is no private good. It, I, it, tell me a little bit more about that. And we talk about that in different areas about that. There's no private good, but where can you pinpoint where the courage stepped in and you took action and then you go, oh, this is for the good of all not just me. Right, right. Well, I believe that there's, you know, still a work in progress setting boundaries with family members, right? Because family members 
uh, to an extent, I believe, um, got rewarded because I was such a people pleaser and I cared more about your feelings and making you happy than my own, I would compromise. If somebody, up until now, if somebody, I'd say, you know, I don't know, I did something or I just expressed what was in my heart. If that other person got upset, I would concede and, and get submissive. And then of course, you know, bite my tongue and stuff it um, and, you know, just not being true to myself. Now I realize that it's really important to express myself and, um, you know, not that I'm trying to get somebody else upset, but just it's my, to be true to myself and, you know, to be true is really to speak what's inside of me because otherwise I'm not teaching people what really, who, what, what I'm really about. And the private good, what I'm learning through the transformation is that, you know, we get feelings of expansion and we get feelings of constriction. We know our soul knows. We don't always listen to it, but it's our tuition. It's a knowing, just like I knew to go to Brave Thinking and the Dream Builder in 2020. And I listened. Um, and then it was, you know, the good, you know, it opened up so many more opportunities for me. And um, but then there are times that, you know, somebody suggests something or even I'm dating again. And, um, you know, there may be um, a man that wants to date me and, um, you know, but if I'm not feeling it or I set a boundary, you know, right away that, you know, some of the guys I would go out with them the first time they would buy me lunch or dinner and they wanted a kiss. And it's like, no, that's not OK. Um, so setting that boundary and the private good is, you know, that I want to get to know you first, that, um, you know, uh, it, it's not about, you know, kissing on the first date and, you know, and getting into the physical right away. Um, and it's also about, you know, standing up that, you know, I love people, I'm an extrovert, and I love to be social. But, you know, my husband was, my ex was an alcoholic, and there's a part of me that feels uncomfortable being in bars, people heavy drinking. I'm not against, you know, people drinking. However, it still triggers me, um, you know, of how are they, or are they talking after they had five beers, um, and in the morning, they're not even going to have to say, say hello to me. So I realized that the private good is if it's not good for me, it's not going to be good for others. And I have to honor, you know, the little voice because otherwise, you know, I, uh, you know, things don't work out for me or the other people. I love it. In progress. So there's two more questions. One is um, taking a deep breath in here. Um, how would you love to be known? I know we live on this timeline and there's an ending point, but how would you love to be known in the world? Oh, Judy, this is so... I, I'm Isn't that a great question? It's a great question. I'm loving this. Um, I think I'm going to be one of your uh, clients that yeah, I'm going to be one of your, you know, uh, spectators that joins every week. Um, this is so fascinating. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So... How would I like to be known? Um, the legacy that I really want to uh, be known as is to really help people get back in touch with that inner voice and, you know, start to learn to love you. And if you're in relationships um, that are not healthy for you and you're staying in fear, that just like me, I finally learned that I could make it on my own. But staying in that marriage for all those years, I didn't have the confidence. I had become a half. So really, um, I want to help men, women with regaining their self-confidence and their self-worth. And it's not about the house and it's not about how much money you have. And it's not about, you know, all the status and being married that, there's no private good. So if you're in a relationship that is so unhealthy, but you're staying out of fear, or it could be even a job, you know, it doesn't have to be a relationship, but you're in, you're in a very unhealthy job. It's not working. You're working 80 hours a week, whatever. Um, you know, it's not, it's not good for you, even though it might be paying the bills and you're providing with the family. So to really teach others to re-ignite uh, what's in their heart, give them the confidence 
and empower them to make the right decisions and know that they can make it on their own, even if they've never lived alone, even if that's something that they realize the situation they're in now is just unhappy. They're making, it's making them unhappy and it's really unhealthy. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, so let me ask you one more question as a group, as paradigm shifters, we, we love to end with what can we hold for you what would you love? And we're holding the energy, energetic force, because your private good is our private good. What would you love? What would you love to have us as a community hold for you? Oh, Judy, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. So what I would love is to... Um, I guess in spirit, send, you know, uh, men, women, people that really are struggling in their relationships, um, you know, uh, to somehow I attract them or connect with them to really help them to um, get hope again. And that even though they've lived this way for so long, they don't have to, you know, our our destiny, our history is not you know, does not determine our destiny. And just like Mary did for me, sitting in that Dream Builder Live, really just at a standstill and stuck and lonely and frustrated to really help people have hope again and to have people, you know, somehow we connect and cross one another's path that I can empower men and women uh, and give them confidence that they have more power in them than any situation, circumstance, or condition. (laughs) Awesome. Okay. All right. So get ready to receive. (laughs) We're going to get this energy going. All right. And we're sending this to you, you know, over the waves, you know. All right. So get ready to receive. We see you as a hope, hope filled person going from hopeless to hope filled. How's that sound? Here you go. There you go. Thank you so much for being here. I really love this. Thank you so much, Judy. This was uh, amazing. And uh, I'm so grateful for you. And thank you so much for inviting me. Amen. Amen. One of the things that um, I heard on Sunday, it's it was the week of hope. And I, I want to end with that. And it was like, in the beginning, there was hope. Hope. You can sit on the couch and have the hope all you can. Hope plus faith, which is an act of hope plus faith plus love, results. So, yes, thank you so much for being here. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much, Judy. Bye, everybody.